welcome back my dear students of class 10 this is the last video of act 4 scene 1 and this is the climax of that very class scene or the core scene where wherein Shylock loses the bond and is caught in his own trap therefore the duke allows permit Shylock to leave the court with half his goods and the other half has to be kept in a trust on the condition that immediately he becomes a Christian and he bequeaths or leaves his property, half of his property to Jessica and Lorenzo after his death. So this is the climax for the end of Act 4, Scene 1, the trial scene. Today we shall move ahead with line number 388 that is from Shylock's speech. So without further ado, let us start with Page number 128 and line number 388, that is Shylock's speech. Shylock says when he hears the verdict that his property will be confiscated by the state and half will be given to Antonio, that time Shylock is in deep melancholy and Shylock is in a deep grief because he has lost almost all his wealth. Therefore, hearing that, Shylock says, Nay, that is line number 200, 388, Nay, take my life and all, pardon not that. So Shylock says that, go ahead, announce the verdict, take my life. Do not forgive, do not spare my life either. You take my house when you do take the prop. You have taken the, you better take the house when you have already taken the Pillar that means Shylock's life here is compared to the house and his very money, his very income is being compared to the pillar, the very foundation of the house. So if the pillar is being taken, then obviously there is no use of the house, it becomes baseless. So Shylock says that since you have taken my very mode of sustenance, my money, why don't you take my life as well? Then he says that don't sustain my house, the money. The income is the very sustenance, is the very support of my house, of my life. You take my life when do you do take the means where my eye he leaves. So this is a means, money is the means of making a, a living. So if you are taking the means, then you also take my life. Do not spare my life either when you are taking my entire money. So there is no point of living without money. Then Portia says, what mercy can you render him, Antonio? Then Portia asks, Antonio, what mercy can you show to this man? Then Grisham immediately he intervenes and he says, a halter gratis. He deserves nothing but a halter gratis means a rope, a hangman's rope in order to hang himself for God's sake. So Grisham wants Shylock to be dead and he says that Shylock does not deserve anything except for a rope to hang himself. Then Antonio he replies, so please my lord, the duke and all the court to quit the fine for one half of his goods. So Antonio here becomes a little bit merciful and he says that if the duke and the court agree, he says to set aside the fine for one half of his property. So one half of his property will be exempted. Shylock will be allowed to leave with half of his goods. To quit the fine for one of his goods, that means to avoid or to spare one half of his goods. I am content. I am agreed that will suffice for me. So he will let me have the other half in use to render it. And the other half, what about the other half? He will be left with one half and the other half, according to Antonio, should be kept as a trust. Trust that upon his death unto the gentleman that lately stole his daughter. See, first thing, the other half will be kept as a trust on the condition that his money that half of his goods or that money will be uh, given to, bequeathed or will be passed on to Lorenzo and Jessica who lately stole his daughter means who lately ran away with his daughter Jessica that is Lorenzo. Two things provided more. See again 
and Tony uh, Shylock's life is being spared on two conditions. First one is he presently become a Christian. Shylock has to immediately be converted into a Christian. And the second one is he do record a sign. Shylock has to agree or to sign an a sign an agreement, sign a deed, a bond, here in the court of all he dies possessed unto his son Lorenzo and his daughter. So Antonio made Shylock sign a deed in the court that whatever he had at the time, it will be passed on, it will be given to his daughter Jessica and Lorenzo after his Dead. So this is very very important. I urge you all to underline this very speech of Antonio where he tries to be more civil to Shylock on the condition that first Shylock has to get immediately converted into a Christian and secondly he has to sign a deed mentioning that after his death his will, wealth will be passed on to Jessica and Lorenzo. Then the Duke says that is page number 129. He shall do this. Yes, he shall sign the bonds or else I'll recant the pardon that I late pronounced here. Or else I'm going to withdraw the pardon that I had just now announced. I will not forgive Shylock if he does not sign the bond. Portia, are thou contented Jew? Are you satisfied Jew? What dost thou say? What do you have to say? Then Shiloh says, Yes, I am content. I am satisfied. I want nothing. Portia, clerk, draw a deed of gift. Draw a deed of gift means a document to make his gift official. The gift means where his wealth will be passed on to Lorenzo and Jessica. So that deed is a, is a kind of the document to make his deed or the gift an official one. Shylock, I pray you give me leave to go from hence. I'm not well. Shylock, please request the court to allow him to leave the court because he is feeling unwell. Send the deed after me and I will sign it. So Shylock assures that you can send the agreement after me, then I will definitely sign it. Then Duke says, get thee done, but do it. You can go from the cross right now. You can leave, but make sure you will sign the deed. Then Graciano says, again, he makes a humorous comment in between. And he makes a humorous, a funny remark here. In Christianing shall thou have two godfathers. Had I been judged, thou shouldst have had ten more to bring thee to the gallows, not to the fund. See, basically this is a reference to the Christian ritual. When a man is admitted to a Christian religion or a Christian faith, he has to be baptized with water. And at that time, he has one, a godfather and a godmother who are responsible, you know, to see that that particular man, he grows up as a good Christian, as a good man. So that is the reference of godfather. Usually a person or a child they have when they are baptized. And Godfather's very term is used in another funny context. That refers to the name of, you know, for the members of a jury. A jury uh, consisting of 12 members who are supposed to pass a sentence, a death sentence to a criminal. So this Godfather's refers to two meanings it signifies two meanings one godfathers during the baptism time and godfathers refers to a jury of 12 members so here graciano says in christian you'll have two godfathers when you are baptized you have two godfathers but had i been the judge graciano says that had i been the judge right now i should i, I should have added 10 more so that it would become 12 and it would become a jury of godfathers that would announce a death sentence or announce a death penalty to Shylock. So it is alluded here that the jury of 12 would have condemned Shylock to death. So this is very Graciano's desire to put Shylock to death or to the gallows where he would be hanged and killed. Duke says, Sir, I entreat you home with me to dinner. Duke says, Sir, I request you to have dinner with me. So the Duke here you know, appeases Portia to have dinner with him.
But Portia requires, uh, requ uh, you know, she responds, I humbly do desire your grace of pardon. I humbly require, request your grace of pardon. Please pardon me. Please forgive me. For I must away this night towards Padua. I must leave to Padua this very night. And it is meet I presently set forth. And right now, immediately, it is very, very necessary for me to begin the journey or start the journey to Padua, right? Now, so Portia denies uh, the Duke's offer to have dinner. Then Duke says, I'm sorry that your laser serves you not. Another, Antonio, gratify this gentleman, for in my mind, you are much bound to him. So Duke says that, and I, I feel sorry, I'm sorry to hear that you do not have the time to spare. Antonio, gratify means reward this gentleman, reward this lawyer, because for in mind means, in my opinion, the Duke says that you are very much indebted to this young lawyer, so you need to gratify or reward this young man. Then exuant Duke, Magnificus, and the, the train who all were present for the court proceeding since it's already over. Now comes the time when Antonio and Bassanio, they have to reward the lawyers, that is, Portia and her clerk, Nerissa. Then Bassanio says, most worthy gentlemen, I, am, I and my friends have by your wisdom been this day acquitted of grievous penalties. So he says that in this very day, Bassanio, me Bassanio and my friend Antonio, because of your wisdom, because of your maturity, because of your, uh, the talent that he has, because of his uh, wisdom and the knowledge. He says that, that because of that, the life of my friend Antonio has been acquitted, has been relieved, has been saved of the grievous penalty. So of grievous penalty refers to the death. So here Bassanio says that on this very auspicious day, your wisdom has saved my life, my friend's life from the death penalty. In lieu whereof, lieu means instead of that, in return of that, 3,000 ducats due unto the Jew will freely cope your courteous pains with all. So here Bassanio offers 3,000 ducats to Portia, which he was supposed to pay back to Shylock. So he says that for the pain, for the courteous pain, means for the trouble you have taken, for the pain you have gone through in order to deliver the verdict and to go through the case, we will be gratified to offer you the 3,000 ducats. Antonio says, and stand indebted over and above, even although we pay you 3,000 ducats for your kind efforts and, you know, gratified work, the money that we are offering you would be very less. We will, we would be indebted more upon you. In love and service to your ever more, we will be always remain indebted to your love and service always. Ever more means ever and ever. Then Portia replies, he is well paid. This is also another important, yet another important speech. Uh, you all need to underline this Portia's speech. He is well paid, that is well satisfied. This is very, very important. It means that being satisfied with a job well done is a kind of payment. Enough. If you have justified your work, you don't need any payment because that gives you inner satisfaction that will provide you inner happiness. So he says that being satisfied with the job you have done, that too well done, is a payment enough. And I'm delivering you, I'm satisfied. I am say regarding, you know, mind saving you from the clutches of Jew, that I am satisfied. And therein do account myself well paid and consider that I myself is being well paid in saving your life. My mind was never yet more mercenary. I never wanted to earn money. I was never interested in monetary terms. I pray you know me when we meet again. I just request you. I don't need anything else. I request you to know me means to remember me, recognize me when we shall meet again. I wish you well, and so I take my leave. So Portia, uh, Portia here takes or bids farewell to Bassanio and Antonio, rejecting the amount of 3,000 ducats for a service well done as a payment enough. Bassanio then says, Dear sir, I force you, I must attempt you further. Take some remembrance. 
Now Bassanio here forces and insists for she had to take something, a kind of memento in order, or a kind of souvenir in order to have it as a remembrance. And he says, take some remembrance as a tribute, as a gift, not as a fee. Grant me two things. I pray you not to deny and to pardon me. Please do not. Please pardon me. Please forgive me for putting pressure on you to ask for two gifts. So Bassanio is asking for Shia, the lawyer, to ask for or to grant you know, them two things. So what are those two things Portia is going to ask for? Portia says, you press me so far. That means you insist me so far. You're putting pressure on me really hard. And therefore I will yield. I will, therefore I will accept. To Antonio, now Portia turns to Antonio and give me your gloves. So Portia asks Antonio's gloves. I'll wear them for your sake. I will wear those glo gloves in your remembrance. To Bassanio and Portia, what does she ask from Bassanio? She says, and for your love, I'll take this ring from you. Do not draw back your hand, I'll take no more. And you will in, lo in love shall not deny me this ring. So for this is another yet funny situation where Portia asks for the ring which Bassanio had in his finger. That is in fact the ring. That in fact is the ring that she herself had earlier given to Bassanio and had asked him not to part with it. Now she asks for the same ring. Now this is pretty hilarious. Then Bassanio responds, this ring, good sir, alas, it is trifle. This ring, my good sir, it is very trifle. It is ordinary, it is the insignificant thing. I will not shame myself to give you this. It is very insignificant. It's not that expensive. I would be ashamed to offer this ring to you. Then Portia, she becomes a little, little bit obdurate here and keeps on asking for the ring. I will have nothing else but only this ring. And now me thinks I have mind to it. Now I think that I am very much determined to take this ring from you. Bassanio, there is more depends on this than on the value. No, Bassanio says that the ring means more to me than its actual value. The dearest ring in Venice, I will give you the costliest, the most expensive gift or the ring you'll ever get in Venice that I'm going to offer you as a gift. And, and I find it out by proclamation that means I will make a public announcement to find the most expensive ring for you. Only for this I pray you pardon me. But as far as the ring I'm wearing is concerned, I request you to pardon me. But still Portia says, I see sir, you are liberal in offers. You are very generous and liberal only in making offers. But when it comes to become practical, you every time step back. Then she says, you taught me first to beg and now me thinks you teach me how a beggar should be answered. Because earlier Bassanio insists and forces Portia to ask for the gift. And now when she does that, again Bassanio has set himself back from giving the ring. So Portia makes a, bit, a little bit of hilarious remark and she says that earlier you asked me to beg and now you teach me how to treat with a beggar because you do not every time offer what the beggar asks for it from you. Bassanio, good sir, the ring was given by my wife and when she put in on, she made me vow that I should never either nail, shall, uh, sell nor give nor lose it. This wife, this ring has been given to me by my dear wife and when she put that ring on my finger, she made me take a vow, she made me take a promise that I will never ever lose it nor sell it or give it to anybody. Then Portia says, that excuses serves many men to save their gifts. Many men use this kind of excuses to save their gifts. And if your wife be not a mad woman, and if your wife is not mad, and if she knew how well I deserved the ring, and if she knew how much I deserved the ring, she would not hold out enemy forever. She will not hate you or will be angry with you forever if she knows the entire case that if she knows how much you are indebted to me, if you give me the ring also, I don't think so she is going to remain angry with you forever. For giving it to me, well, peace be with you. Now, after telling this, Portia exits by bidding 
farewell and say as well. We bid farewell and let there be peace with you all. And exuant Portia and Nerissa. This is followed by brief Antonio's speech. He says, My Lord Pisanio, let him have the ring. Let his deservings and my love withal be value against your wife's commandment. Now Antonio, he tries to convince Bassanio to give that ring to the lawyer and says, My Lord Bassanio, give that ring to the lawyer. Consider how much he deserves the ring and consider my love together and take it more important than your wife's order, than your wife's commandments not to part with the ring. Then Bassanio ultimately he orders Graciano to run and overtake him and to catch that lawyer. Give him the ring and bring him, if you can, unto Antonio's house away. Make haste. Then Bassanio asks Graciano to go and get the lawyer and give him the ring. Come you and I will theater present events. We will go to your house immediately and in the morning early we will be both fly towards Belmont come Antonio you now Bassanio and Antonio they leave towards the towards Antonio's house and on the next day the following day they are planning to leave for Belmont immediately so this is the act for scene one and one important thing that happens towards the end is that the rings that uh, Antonio is Bassanio and Graciano they are wearing they are being given to the lawyer and the clerk and this scene is followed by the famous ring episode that you have in Act 4, Scene 2. So we shall end over here. After this we shall move on to Act 4, Scene 2 that is the ring episode.